How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi, and welcome to the final Grand Prix of Nitro Fueled. With that, I present to you our first look at Drive Through Danger, the newest racetrack for this month's Gasmoxia Grand Prix. Enjoy and we'll be right back after this. First things first, our guest star for this last Grand Prix is none other than Fake Velo. Emperor Velo 27, the only new character for this Grand Prix. Actually, this was already hinted at. Remember this screenshot from Activision's latest blog post going over how this is the final Grand Prix? Well, there you go, 51 characters. There's your hint. Now, as for the introduction for Velo, it starts with Nitrous Oxide saying that he invited a fellow ruler to join the race. Looking at this racetrack, it seems to be Gas Moxia with all of the gas around, the space theme especially. At least this appears to be a certain section of the planet with perhaps popular fast food restaurants like Nuclear Pizza and Toxic Burger. You also hear one of the employees say, May I take your order if you watch the gameplay? From before. Also notice how there's a bunch of parked cars. It also seems to indicate that you are indeed in some sort of food plaza. Notice the Velo logo on each car. Gives off that uh, feeling of Velo actually visiting this place. With that in mind, guess Moxia. Oxide did retreat to his home planet after losing twice in adventure mode in Nitro Field. Well, CTR. Would you like to see this introduction scene of Emperor Velo? 
as something actually possible? Or the other option? Do you see this introduction as just another, well, it's just an introduction. No need to make a big deal out of it, right? So you consider it non-canon. It could most likely be the latter, but do recall, Activision had published a short comic of Zim and Zam, Oxide's most trusty comrades. Location was Gasmoxia, before he makes his way to Earth. I did make a video going a bit deeper into this digital comic. I won't dive deep in this video, all right, as I've already done so in the past. If you're interested with that video, I'll leave a link in the description below. But the key thing here is this digital comic was made by Beanox and is considered a prequel to Crash Team Racing. Zim and Zam and Oxide were all part of Team Oxide and Crash Nitro Kart, remember? A team which also featured Velo. Many people imagine a CNK story mode in the future. Although Grand Prix are coming to an end, we don't know what really will come about to CTR apart from the additional items mentioned in the latest blog post. Look, if Beanox ever plans to introduce a story mode of Crash Nitro Kart, or CNK for short, this introduction of Emperor Velo could be the basis of that, like kind of give us an idea of what their relationship could be, Oxide and Velo, how they basically knew each other. This is implying that they don't strictly follow the story of CNK. They build their own universe. That's what I'm aiming at. I still wonder who sent that letter to Oxide in space, with his location pinpointed at. Could it be that Velo sent that letter to test Oxide's skill as a racer? How does that sound? Would you imagine Oxide kidnapping everyone in order to have Velo test his skills against those people? Do you see what sort of distinction I'm making here? After all, Crash Nitro Kart was basically that. Velo kidnapped everyone, forced them to race in order to show off his skills and entertain himself. So with that sort of imagination in my head, everyone got transported to Gasmoxia in order for Oxide to feed his pride. He wants to see everyone lose against Velo, because he was so embarrassed after losing twice in CTR. I kind of thought of like theorizing in that department a bit. At the end of the day, this introduction is probably just not canon. Now, with the lore segment out of the way, let's look deeper into Drive Through Danger and see what we can pick up on. The track aesthetic certainly gives off Oxide Station vibes and Hot Air Skyway. Absolutely. With the open borders, how open the racetrack looks, it has Hot Air Skyway written all over it. The green matching with the orange, it's nice to look at. A nice contrast between the two. That right there is Spyro, in his legendary spacesuit. If you were ever wondering about Velo's cart ever appearing in Nitro Fueled, well here it is. It's officially called the Velo Chopper Cart. There's a better look at it in the screenshot with Velo actually in it. In the center would be Embryoctopus, Brio's legendary skin for this Grand Prix. On the right we got Koala Kong in his astronaut suit. That right there on the top would be Oxide's ship. That clearly indicates that at least Nitrous Oxide is watching. Here's another look at another screenshot. Velo again with Crash and the Gold Tier Cart. The Nitro Squad with legendary skins again. I can already hear the excitement surrounding these characters, because you know they got legendary skins again. Tana is in her Privateer skin and the Bronze Tier Cart. Isabella is in her Marauder suit, Megumi, a Raider suit, and Ami, and Liz, we got the Buccaneer and Corsair suits. Right in the center, we have a ship. We don't really see it well in this screenshot, you'll see it later. Next screenshot, King Chicken, legendary spacesuit, unlocked as a silver tier prize. Notice the Activision logos plastered on Koala and Chicken. Next thing we can notice on the track, is that a Velo Comet, or can we call it a moon again? You know, just like Inferno Island, what do you think? Ah, there's the ship from before. It looks like Oxide's ship, but reskinned. Different coloration. Could that be Velo's ship? There's something I've noticed about the red ship, it uh, actually teleports. And just looking at the sky, the surrounding area, there seems to be a battle going on. 
And that Oxide hates nuclear pizza. He's like directly attacking at the restaurant. Also, from what we can notice, the laser shooting happens during the lap too. Looking more at Velo's gameplay, notice those light laser grids. Let's call them that. Each pertains to a certain set of turbo pads, kind of similar to Electron Avenue. How an exclamation crate causes the turbo lanes to switch around, but the thing with those exclamation crates, anyone can activate it. If someone behind you breaks the crate, the lane switches. Basically, it's a trap. As for drive through danger, slowing down the footage, look at how the player, in first place, Pasadena, as soon as she passes that grid, it switches to green. Both green? Alright. It activates all green turbo pads. Well, burger pads if you want to call it that. From what I understand, just by looking at this, it resets each lap, logically. Now looking at Spyro's gameplay, passing through the right grid switches the left side to pizza. So basically, whoever passes in whichever grid, if in first place, it's random. For example, with Spyro we have Entropy in first place. He goes within the right grid, but the left one switches. So basically, if you're in first place, you have the power to randomly switch between orange and green. For Koala, for example, we have Ripper Roo in first place. He turned it green. However, he already passed the grid. We can't really see it, but we can easily assume. So yeah, be in first place, you will affect the track. You finish a lap, it resets. Now the difference between orange and green, just looking at the track overall, the orange turbo pads, let's call it that, it looks more advantageous. Why? Because those turbo pads are generally closer to the inner curb of the track. It's better for drifting. Green mostly resides on the outside curb. Slightly extending the distance you have to travel and drifting will be a bit uh, trickier. Of course, depending of your style of engine. As for shortcuts and blue fire, blue fire on the very first jump. And that's basically it for the track when it comes to blue fire. There's a shortcut at three quarter of the track. Another bigger shortcut before that with Spyro. I gotta say there's something I really love about this shortcut. Another one. It's a short one, but it's very well hidden. I love it. When you play as Koala, look at how he moves to the left and gains more momentum thanks to those extra turbo pads. Now I understand. Beanock saying coming out with a bang for this one. Not only the shortcuts are awesomely placed, I like it, but this whole track speaks Hot Air Skyway, a fan favorite, if I'm not mistaken. Looking at the roadmap, unfortunately we don't have legendary skins for neither Pinstripe or Geary. They did promise a long-awaited item set to get revealed after this Grand Prix ends, according to the latest blog post. Last thing, of course, the voice actor for Velo, Steve Blum, all I know is he was interested in reprising his role according to this retweet. If you heard his voice in the gameplay, if you paid close attention to his quotes, it might be him, but it might not. It's been years since he voiced Velo, so hmm, we'll just have to wait and see for confirmation. So with that being said, folks, this is it for the analysis. So as usual, if you have any questions or thoughts or anything like that, leave everything in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi and thank you so much for watching.